Hey guys, Justin here at the Crash Fab Ranch. Um, wanted to go through and install today with you guys. We're putting power tank monster valves in a set of Hutchison Rock Monster wheels. It's not the most straightforward install, which is why I'm doing this video. Um, a lot of people will say that they won't work or X, Y, and Z. Um, they do work and um, the only you know forewarning before you install these in your very expensive reels is that this monster valve is going to sit in a location that if you get a rock caught in your in your wheel here it is going to probably knock this off so if you're going to do this installation in your wheels and you're actually going to be out there wheeling i highly recommend you also go buy yourself four quarter inch npt plugs and, it, and also a, um, boy, I can't think of the name of it right now. Essentially a um, reversal tool to like an extractor. There you go, I can't, I can't think of it right now. The appropriate size extractor so that if this get broken off inside there and you can't get a wrench on it, that way you could take your extractor, push it down in there, extract this aluminum threaded piece. And then from there, you can go ahead and install your plug get home on the trail and uh, then buy a new monster album and reinstall it. Um, that's the only forewarning because um, it does it does leave it in a vulnerable position and even in this wheel I'll show you a little bit closer up but you can see the rock rash really really close to where this is going to be and it just takes a little bit of a nub on a rock to just knock that right off. Um, but so that's the only forewarning. Other than that it's a Excellent tool. I run them on all my wheels and all my rigs that I do. Um, it's the only way to air up and air down as far as I'm concerned. So let's go over what you're gonna need. Um, I like to place the wheel up on a good working platform. This happens to be on my forklift because it's a good working surface for me to be at and I can comfortably get to the position without bending over and I can easily see if things are square and take a look at all what I'm doing. Um, okay, so first things first, um, you're gonna need tape measure and a marking utensil. In this case, the wheel's black, so I like to use a silver Sharpie so I can mark and see where I'm gonna be marking at. Um, and I'll get up a little bit closer when I actually start marking this out. And then um, you'll also need a good center punch as well as a hammer. Um, I always like to make a nice center punch before I start drilling to make sure I'm on the mark and the drill bit doesn't walk at all. Um, I like to do a pre-drill. This is a quarter inch pre-drill and I like to run that in through first because that way I make sure that my drill bit doesn't walk at all and it's right on the path where I set my center punch at. And then I'm using, I think this is a, okay. So I have a 7 16 drill bit and I like to set it up on two drills. That way I just don't have to switch drill bits and drills. Um, so essentially what you'll do is you'll mark the hole, drill the hole, and then you're gonna tap the hole. Um, power tank when you buy their monster valves they supply you with a tap it's a quarter inch 18 MPT tap I've done this a few times so you can see that I've put a piece of wire around here where I like to stop now you're you're not gonna have that from the factory so when you do your first one tap a little bit pull the tap out check it with your monster valve to see your depth and just keep going down slowly you know a couple turns at a time until you get the proper depth for your monster valve so you don't go too deep. Don't just take this tap and ram it all the way in there because you're going to have problems because this thing is not going to get a good seal. Um, I like to use a um, tapping socket or in this case this is just a 12 point socket that happens to fit this tap very well. And then a, a nice good ratchet to give you good leverage over that. Um, so that's going to be part of your install. Um, on the Hutchison, you know, things are a little tight between all these nubs. So have your monster chuck handy so that you can double check it, make sure it fits on, but you shouldn't have any issues. Um, I also like to keep the uh, valve core tool handy in case I need to pull a valve core out or something. Um, and then I use a wrench and some pipe dope to install the actual monster valve itself. Um, this is just your regular pipe dope you can buy at the hardware store and then the appropriate size 9 16 wrench for the monster valve one Okay guys a little bit closer up here. Um, so I've got safety glasses on um, I've got a chuck hooked up 
Um, so we're, as the wheel sits right now, there is full, you know, 30 pounds of pressure inside this tiring wheel. Technically, you could do this on the on the Jeep. You wouldn't even need to pull your wheel off as long as you support the axle so it doesn't completely compress and deflate your tire. Um, and so I start off with the wheel completely full of air. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't do it. Um, you'll see what happens when I drive through the wheel. Um, so to start off, um, I've already, I've pulled these wheels apart and inspected them and made my game plan prior to doing this. So what I do is I take a straight edge and I bump the inside flat edge of the wheel, if, if you can see that. And then I make a mark about five eighths of an inch out. Okay. Now, once I have that mark five eighths of an inch out, if you can, if you wanted to use some kind of measuring device, um, go ahead. But I'm going to eyeball between the exact center of this, and I'm also looking down the center of the valve stem to this point as well to get a nice even offset. Um, and so I make a little T mark where I want my X point, and that's where we're going to drill our hole. Um, once I have that, I take my center punch and hammer and I'll give myself a nice center punch. I like a nice deep center punch. Um, so from that point, I'm gonna go ahead and drill my quarter inch pilot hole. Um, now, what you need to pay attention to, and it'd be more difficult if you were doing this on the vehicle, is that this is a flat surface, right? But this surface is not 90 degrees to the back of this face. It kind of angles out. So my drill is gonna match this flat plane. And that's where I'm gonna drill my hole. So I'm gonna drill this hole and obviously you'll see when I get to the end of it, it's gonna shoot air out and all these sh shavings are gonna go flying everywhere. Okay, that was pretty loud. Um, so, obviously I did my quarter inch hole. As the quarter inch hole finished, I immediately grabbed my three, uh, excuse me, seven sixteenths drill bit, and I followed it with the seven sixteenths drill bit. Now, with the seven sixteenths drill bit, once I punched through, I went down much further. And the reason for that is because on these Hutchison's, there's a big piece of rubber in there. And I, what I wanted to do was penetrate that rubber with the big drill bit. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna pop this camera off. And you can see, there's a big hole and it goes down all the way through the rubber in there. So, now that that's done, we're gonna jump into tapping. Now, it's gonna be a little bit hard because um, I'm gonna be filling this with air the entire time and keeping the airflow coming out, blowing the chips out. Um, when you notice, there's a few times during the tap, I will back the drill bit, back the tap out, and I will lubricate it with a tapping fluid. Now it's really important on aluminum wheels that you keep that drill bit lubricated. If you don't, that aluminum is gonna gall up in there and it's gonna just completely destroy and take out those threads. So if you love it, lube it, and let's get this going.
Now this is a good industrial cutting and tapping fluid I'm using. Um, your, gooder, your better supplies will have it. But even just stuff that you can get at Home Depot or any of that stuff is gonna still be a good tapping fluid for you. Now tapping is all about feel. And if you notice, the deeper I go, the less I do at a time. And so literally, once I'm this deep, like I'll literally do like a quarter turn and then back it up, then another quarter turn and then back it up. It's a slow process, but tapping is all about feel. And when it feels like it's getting hard, stop. You're gonna, you're gonna break something, just like tapping in a bolt. And so now I'm to my point and I'm just gonna do a couple turns. You know, that's it. Back it off. Put it in. Back it off. Put it in. Back it off. Put it in. Okay. So I'm gonna pop this off. So once you do your first one, you set your depth. The reason why I use a piece of wire here is because my wire is bottomed out. And you can see that it's all the way against the rim there. So I know that I'm at my depth. Like I said, don't just run your tap in as far as I did without checking it every half turn on the first one. And then once you get your first one done, you can set your depth. And then on your second one, after you have your depth gauge set, I would still, you know, only go in so far and then check it. Make sure your depth is good. I'm gonna blow this hole out. And I'm gonna blow the hole off. If you don't have one of these from Power Tank and you don't have a monster truck, which will take any style air fitting, you are also missing out on life. This thing can connect and disconnect under pressure up to 400 PSI effortlessly. I love their, I love their products. I buy power tank products for every aspect of air stuff in my life just because it's such good quality stuff. It's not cheap, but worth every damn penny. So now that I've got my hole tapped, um, I'll show you the threads in there. So you can see the threads are really nice. I took it nice and slow and lots of lube and everything looks really good in there. So what I can do now, I like to go ahead and test fit my monster valve first. Make sure my depth looks proper before I put a bunch of sealant all over it. So as you're screwing it in, because it's a tapered fitting, I can already start feeling to get tight right now. So I'm gonna use, jump to my wrench. It's still nice and easy, but you can just feel the, the tension on it. And right there is snug. And let me pop this off. So you can see I just got a little bit of thread sticking out. Um, and that's how I like to run it. That way I still know that I'm not bottomed out against the shoulder of this bolt, but I'm nice and tight and I've got full thread lockup to give me a nice good seal. So, now I'm gonna pop this back out. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pipe dope on it. This stuff is messy, but it works. You can also just use a regular Teflon tape or any other pipe sealing product. I just happen to like this stuff a little bit better myself, so that's what I run. I like to make sure I get nice coverage on my threads. And I go ahead and wipe off the inside and then I'll go ahead and install it. The key to cutting and tapping is all about the feel. Um, and it takes some getting used to, and if you don't feel comfortable drilling right in your rim, 
grab a piece of scrap metal, grab a piece of aluminum. Obviously a tin can won't work, but you know, find a piece of aluminum and practice a couple times, you know? If you're not comfortable, then first of all, don't do it. But if you can practice a couple times on a piece of aluminum um, and get comfortable, then go ahead and tackle your rim. And if you're still not comfortable, take it to a guy that can do it, take it to a shop, bring it to me, whatever works. Um, so there's your install. I'm just gonna obviously grab a rag and clean up my mess down there. And then we'll go ahead and double check our monster chuck fits on there. There you go. So let's air her up. So this is a regular 120 PSI air system and uh, what's pretty cool is how fast the system fills. It's absolutely incredible. This is a 42 inch Maxxis tire and I'm already up 10 PSI. Um, the amount of flow that these quarter inch monster valves do is just incredible. Now if you take this monster valve system and you hook it up to one of their power tank CO2 tanks it's even faster. This tire can be filled in about 30 seconds with a 400 PSI monster tank. Correct, excuse me, I can't talk today. With a 400 PSI output on a power tank, CO2 tank. And as you can see, we're already at 25 PSI. Almost done. Thirty PSI, Dunzo. Pop off the monster truck here. What a system! All right, guys. So that's it for the Hutchinson monster valve install. Um, hopefully, that helps you out and gives you a little bit of confidence that it can be done. Um, and like I say, it's pretty out of the way. You know, you'd have to be trying to get a rock in there, but be careful out there in the trails. It can get knocked off. Make sure you carry a plug with you. Um, hopefully that helps and uh, thanks for watching if you like this video go ahead and like and subscribe to the crash fab channel and also check us out on other social media platforms we're on Instagram and Facebook and we'll get the website and all that stuff and any questions give us a call we're more than happy to help us help you out thanks guys